Hello, I'd like to talk to you about a book I've been enjoying lately, and that book is called Maze Solve the World's Most Challenging Puzzle. Now, Maze is something like a choose your own adventure book, if you are familiar with those books where you'll have a decision to make, and that decision will um, lead you to one page or another, and you'll continue a story that way. Uh, it's different, though, um, and I'll try to explain how, though really the best way to, to know how it's different is to read and immerse yourself uh, in maze. So, if you look here, you see the picture. The picture is very vis visual, um, but there's more to maze than just the pictures. Uh, but above the doors in this picture are numbers, and those are page numbers, and that's kind of how it's a choose your own adventure book. But the narrative is not a linear narrative in the sense of a choose your own adventure book. It's not if you'd like to do this, go do this. If you'd like to do this, go to this page. Instead, it's um, if you'd like to go through this door, turn to this page. And there are, it's something of a puzzle book. It says solve the world's most challenging puzzle, and it is very challenging um, because there are clues as to which page number you're supposed to get to. Now, what makes this book especially interesting, or one of the things that makes the book especially interesting, is that uh, it's not, the clues aren't just in the picture, the clues could be in the text, and there's this interplay between text and picture. And the text uh, follows the exploits of this guide who's taking this group um, of, kind of semi-specified people through the maze. Uh, the trick is that even, and you're supposed to kind of identify with those people, I think, uh, but even as they're going through the maze, what they do could actually be a clue as to what you're supposed to do. Or how things are worded could be a clue as to what you're supposed to do. The word choice. Um, there's a lot of play on words. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. It was made by one, the book was made by one person, Christopher Manson. Um, tends, there tends to be a dichotomy between visual thinkers and verbal thinkers, but this person apparently is both. He's got kind of both going on. It's, it's interesting writing. Um, so that's kind of the basic thing of the game, so, or the, the book, which is, I think, like a game. Um, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to start at the beginning of the maze and find your way to the middle of the maze. That's kind of your first job in the maze. There's the middle. Um, you can always peek at that. You can skip ahead. You can always skip ahead. You can you can, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then you're trying to get back out. And you're, and so once you've figured out how to do that, and to be honest, I did that just by guess and check. Um, because most of my time with the maze book was spent just meandering. With children, a lot of the times, I, I'm with children a lot, and children will look at this book with you for, for like an hour. Like, I'm talking like three-year-olds. Um, it's, they, they get really engrossed in the decision making. They're not really like solving puzzles or anything, but you can kind of start, uh, pointing them that way. And it's interesting to do. And, uh, sometimes makes you kind of dwell on pages more than you would otherwise. So, I'm uh, getting on a little bit of a tangent. So then, after you've gone to the middle and back, you try to figure out how to do it in the sh least amount of moves possible. And the, the book sets out that's 16 moves, 16 page turns, and you can get to the center and back. Then, supposedly, there's a riddle in this middle here, or in this middle room, and you see there's a question mark. There's a lot of stuff, all and none. Um, and then along the path, I guess there is a way. There is an answer to that riddle. So the, once you've found the shortest path, you use that path to answer the riddle. Now that said, there's a, so those are kind of the three things the book, the tasks the book sets out for you to do: find the way in and out, find the shortest way in and out, and then find the riddle and solve the riddle. Okay. The first two are are easy. You can do it guess and check. The riddle is very difficult because you don't even know like what constitutes a clue. The, the, you have to really kind of get into the head of this author. And I've, you know, I found the path and have started to kind of figure out clues based on already knowing the answer. And maybe that will help me get to the riddle. But I've kind of gone a different route because there's all sorts of other mysterious things in this maze. 
like, um, and you can take everything I'm saying as kind of a spoiler. You're going to, if you're going to pick this book up, you're going to want to experience it for yourself, maybe for the first time. Uh, so keep that in mind. Like, there's this top-hatted man, so there's, who, who shows up sporadically throughout the book. And he has some relationship with the guide, and they don't, they give, the guide gives some tantalizing clues as to who he is, but I, you don't know for sure, or that's like, a, that's another mystery, I think, that's not specified, or something that you can try to figure out. But the top hat of man, like, so is, at some point he loses his top hat, and at some point he sees the guide and he runs away. And again, these are all spoilers, I'm sorry about that. Um, there's a, there's motifs that are, are repeated, like hats figure in a lot in the maze. Um, there's very few people without hats. There's animals. There's this bird that keeps showing up um, that I haven't been able to identify. I thought at first it might be a bird of paradise, but a bird of paradise doesn't quite have the, the crown, uh, but that would kind of fit with some of the, the kind of mythical, symbolic nature of the thing. But then I was thinking it was a certain bird from um, South America. Uh, anyway, so there's just a lot to explore in this book, and you can kind of keep going and going and going with it. Um, there's a there's a website that I think helps facilitate it. If you're if you're diehard, don't go to the website. Do it all by yourself and try to figure it out and take years or however long it takes you. Um, if you, I like to use this website because it's kind of this community process and this discussion process, and there are, there are strengths that other people have that kind of fill in gaps for myself or the the, the thought processes they go on kind of help me to. Um, think of new things. So there's a there's a lot in this book. 45 pages, well, I guess 90 pages, if, yeah, um, plus. But it, it can, like I had the flu the other day and I just spent all day looking at this book. It can really um, just go on and on. Now, um, that said, I'm more of a process person. I enjoy the processes of things. If you enjoy an end result and you want it to be clean and fair, I don't know if you would enjoy this. Um, I want to say that because who's, like just the the clues are so like buried oftentimes or so like it's really hard to say what sort of word play or there's like multiple ways you can take it and it's hard to really check that. It's There's not like a um, it's not like doing a crossword puzzle where you can just see, okay, everything fits. Um, there's, it's squishy, it's squishy. Um, and that, that makes it kind of a different sort of puzzle, I think. It's almost a, almost a narrative puzzle, even though, I don't even know if that's the right word. Um, but anyway, May solve the world's most challenging puzzle. You probably still buy it. Um, Really, I'm really enjoying it, and I thought you might too, so I want to talk to you about it today. Thanks.